Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got a little slider here and it's sort of automatically sliding every five seconds, just like any regular slider. But ours is a little bit different. If I hover over one of these slides, it's going to pause and it's going to zoom in. And you can zoom in as much as you want. They can read the writing. They can click on the button. And when they're done, take the cursor off. It'll go back to how it was and continue with the animation. And that's a nice little feature to have on your site. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's roll on down to where we want to work. I'm going to delete the row that this slide is in. Okay, so I've got a section here, the blue tab. I'm going to add a little row in there. I'm going to use a single column for mine. Obviously, put in what works for you. So let's roll on down. I'm looking for a slider today. There it is right there. And by default, it puts in two little slides for you. I'm going to delete one of them. We'll just work on a single one. Okay, the first thing I want to do is put an image background in my little slide here. So I'm going to hit the cog. Put in, obviously, what you want your title to say up here. I'm just going to say first for mine, as I've got no real text here. Put what you want your button to say right there. Obviously, I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Content can go here. And this is a little WYSIWYG box. So you can align, add titles, add media, bullet lists, etc. there. Again, I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Down below, we can add an image or a video. There will appear on the left-hand side here. I'm going to leave those blank. Down below that, we've got a link. You've got separate links for the button and the actual whole module itself, or in this case, the slide. Put a link in there if you want to. Always best practice. We say this every time. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking to somebody else's site, open it in a new tab. That way, your site's going to stay open. Great. Well, here's the one I wanted. Background. And you've got color, gradient, image, which I'll be using today. Background video, background pattern, or background mask. I'm going to click on background image. Let's add a little image. Throw in whatever image you want to use. And as you can see, it's in the background there. And that's great. That's a nice picture, but it's kind of busy. And we're losing a bit of the text in there, really. So to counter that, you can go over to Design. They've got an overlay feature. Click on it. If we use a background overlay, it'll put a little overlay over the whole of the image back there. Makes it a bit easier to read. And you can put your own color in if you want. Just click on that. Perhaps I'm going to make my own black. All you'll see is black. But you've got a very variegated slider over here. If we take that down, you'll start to see the image go through there. So you can bring it back to wherever you want to, as long as your text is legible. The other option, if I turn that back off, is to use a text overlay. And it'll just put something around the text itself. And again, you can put your own color in and adjust it how you want. I put a black in. I'm going to click on the color. The field will pop up. And again, I'm going to pop this slider down. So we can see most of the image through there, but you can still read that text nicely. Great. Well, that's all I'm going to do in my little slide here. I'm pretty happy with that. Works for me. So let's save the changes. That'll take us back to the main slide settings. We're in a slider at the moment. And let's just duplicate it a couple of times so we've got something to animate to. There's one. There's two. They're all identical. Obviously, go into the next ones. Change what you want to change. I'm going to just put this as second. And all I'm going to do is just actually, that should be an ND. And then just change the background picture for this one. Under content, again, rolling straight down the background. That's always where you'll find background under the content tab. We'll switch out this image. Now, let's grab that one. I'll save that back to the main slider settings. Roll up, there's our three slides. I'm going to do the same for the next one here. Text. And again, I'm going to roll down. There's our background image. And we'll pop another one in. 
Great, so we've got three slides now. Let's animate them. I'm in a slide at the moment, our slide number three here. Let's just save this. Once saved, it'll take us back to the main slider settings right here. And you wanna make sure you're in the main slider and not a slide. If we go over to design, down to the bottom, here's an animation. Click on it. We've got automatic animation, which is what we want. So I'm gonna click on that, turn it to on. By default, it makes it every seven seconds. I'm gonna make mine every five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. Great. Now, if you're looking for it and you don't see animation down there, chances are you're in one of your slides because we're in design on the main slider settings here. There it is. But, and this comes up every time I make one of these, if you're in one of your slides, go design and think i want animation it's not there so if it's not there chances are you're in one of your slides just hit the green check mark it'll take you to the main slider settings that's where you'll find your animation fantastic great well it's doing everything it should do now but let's write the little bit of code that we need to make it actually zoom in when we hover over it and I'm going to do that in the main slide settings over in advanced. I'm going to go to custom CSS and I'll put this code down below for anybody that just wants to copy and paste it. In the main element, I'm going to use transform scale, transform colon, the word scale. At the end with no gap, we put some round brackets inside. You put how much you want it to scale. Well, when they're not hovering over it, I want it to be regular size like it is at the moment. So I'm going to put a one in there. Okay, I'm going to copy that. Control C to copy. And common to all Divi modules, if you roll over the dark writing within the module, you see some little icons appear. Roll over the thing you want to affect, main element in my case. Little arrow there. We can set two different values. One for desktop when the mouse is not on it and one for hover when the mouse is on it. If you click on the little arrow, get the hover state up. I'm gonna paste that bit of code in there, Control V to paste. I'm gonna click on the one. I'm gonna put 0.3. That'll scale it up by 30%. And as you can see, it's sort of taking up way more room that we want it to take. I really want it to take the same footprint as it had, so that just the image scales up within the little box there. And also the time it takes to go from this one to this one by default is almost instantaneously because we're doing it with code here. I want to slow it down for a little bit of drama. So it's more of a zoom out. To do that, I'm going to put a semicolon and make sure you're on the desktop, the little desktop state. I'm going to put a semicolon. I'm going to write transition duration, dash duration, colon. I'm going to make mine take five seconds or 5s. And we'll put semicolon there. Now, when we click on the hover, it's going to take five seconds to get to the larger version. As you can see, it's scaling up nicely there. And because we're doing this in the main slider settings, it's affecting every one of our slides, which is what I want. But what we don't want is, like I say, we don't want it spilling out of its original footprint. So we can easily fix that. Let's just save what we've got here. I'm going to click back on desktop. Hit the little green. Let's go into the row that it's actually in. And I'm going to give this row a fixed height. Little cog, get into the row, the green tab. Over to design. I'm going to go down to sizing and I'm going to roll down to height right here. And I'm going to type in, let's try 600 pixels, 600, and it'll put in the PX for you. That's great. But what I'm going to do is hit the overflow. So to do that, go over to advanced. We'll go down to visibility. That's where you find horizontal and vertical overflow. I want to make sure both of those are hidden. So click on them. Go down to hidden. Left click again. 
same for the vertical. That way anything that goes anywhere outside of our row here will not be seen, which is exactly what we want. Now going back to where we put the size in, in design and height, you may want to go in there and again hover over a little phone type icon, click on it and you can set different values there for your tablet and for your phone. Make sure that they work for you on all of those too. Great. What if we've done everything correctly? This should now work for us. Let's hit the little green check mark. We'll save the page changes. The green button. And let's exit the visual builder. We'll roll on down to our little slider there. Every four seconds it should be sliding around and around. Fantastic. When I hover over it, it's going to stop. And it's going to start to grow. And they can click on it. Do what they want. Mouse off. It will go back to how it was. And roll on to the next slide. And of course, same for this one. And that's a nice little interactive feature to add to your slider. Really easy to do, as you can see. Don't forget that code's down below here. So I hope you've enjoyed this day and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below. I'll do my best to answer them or make a little demo video like this one. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.